places the solitary in families. God sets every member of his body in place. We were never designed to live a virtual life. We were designed to live a real life. You know, they say to us that with this generation that the average person spends more than eight hours a day on their phone and laptop, eight hours a day. And most people have their phone turned on all the time, even in bed. In my family, we don't have that. I mean, the, the phones are out of the bedrooms during um, night time. Not during uh, night time can the kids have the phones on. I can't even believe the damage it must do to have a phone on 24-7. It says that most young adults, this will freak you out, send an average of 110 texts a day. Whoa. 110 texts a day. That's what the average are. It's just we've grown up in a generation that doesn't know what it is to ever be disconnected. And that's largely because, uh, you know, we have our information, we have our communication, and we have our entertainment right here in our pocket all the time. And, you know, I grew up in an era where you didn't have all those things. If you wanted to be entertained, you had to go somewhere to be entertained. You couldn't just pull it out of your pocket and go, here we go, I'm going to play games with somebody on the other side of the world and I'm going to be in this virtual game. You know, if I wanted to communicate, I had to use a phone that was at home or write a letter. I didn't just pull it out of my pocket and go, oh, I'm just going to talk to my friend in France right now. That's what I'm going to do. Like, I can do that. That's what... And I just think it's absolutely normal. Well, growing up, it was not normal that I would pull out my phone in Australia and talk to my friend in real time in France or FaceTime them and talk to them. But that's the world that you and I live in. We are so used to being connected 24-7 that we almost have this sense that we feel this need that we have to be available all the time. We, we have to be there all the time. And so the fact is that if our external world, if it's just full of people and full of connection and full of activity all the time, where on earth do you get time? to replenish? Where on earth do you get time then to say, hang on, I need to have some time with God. I need to hear the voice of God. Many of us, we're not hearing the voice of God and primarily through his word because we're so busy staying connected to people. We're so busy being connected to the internet that we don't make uh, time for God. Do you realize that God is more real than the virtual world? But for a whole generation, they don't understand that. They think that, you know, the internet and the virtual world and the digital world is more real than God. It, it makes me laugh. Like, we freak out some people and some traditions and denominations are like, oh, leave all the supernatural stuff out. I'm like, really? I've got a generation that wakes up and talks to, hey, Siri. Yes. I'm like, how normal is that? You think I'm weird because I say, hi, God. You go, gee, she's talking to herself. I'm like, someone pushes a button. My Siri's not activated because I refuse to talk to her. So imagine, <laughs> hi, Siri. And this is what people do. People think God is like Siri. They have these conversations. Hi, Siri, what do you think I feel like for dinner tonight? <laughs> people think, people, you should ask, you should see Google one time because, of course, we're all on the internet. Siri's most frequently asked questions. It'll freak you out. <laughs> It'll freak you out what people talk to Siri about. <laughs> Siri's not real. <laughs> God's real. Alexa's not real. Alexa, change the air conditioning. We think this is, I just need you to see the kind of world we live in. We talk into a machine and the machine talks back. Siri, what do you think I want, want to eat? Siri, which way am I going to go? Siri, can you tell me what blah? And you know what? We start to relate to God like that. Hey, so God, what do you think I might feel like? Where do you think I might want to go? God, I need an answer on this, this and this. And we treat God like Siri. And I'm like, uh, sweetheart, God made the world, Siri didn't. God's real, Siri's not. And if we're not careful, you know, I said that this series could be one of the most important series that I've ever done. It might not be the one that will bring the roof down and shout everyone down. But I'll tell you, we're missing something. When we have a generation that just thinks Siri is real and God's not, I want you to just wonder where we're going with all of that. And when we start to treat God like we treat Siri, as if somehow God's our sugar daddy. Tell me this and give me this and do this. And honestly, Siri, that's just bugs me. I'm going to change your voice. <laughs> I don't like how you sound and what you're delivering and what you... And you go, wow, don't think that's the God in the Bible. Don't think the Hebrew name for God is Siri. It's okay. I don't think that's the case. But what happens to us is we don't realise that the spiritual supernatural realm is more real than the digital virtual world. Amen. But we are so used to that digital virtual world in our pockets 
that we relate to it more like reality than we do to God and the supernatural. Now, that can be dangerous for a generation. That can be really dangerous. You don't just go, hey, Siri, can you fight this spiritual battle for me? Siri, you know, I know the weapons of my warfare. I'm not warring against flesh and blood, but against, you know, powers and principalities. And so can you just like go to fight for me? Siri is not your angel. And we got a generation that doesn't know what's in this word, that wouldn't know how to fight a spiritual battle. But look, it says it up here. Hey, Siri, can you fight the spiritual battle for me? <laughs> Sorry, I can't take in all those words at once. Can you try again? <laughs> Let me tell you, God can take in all of those words at once. God can take in all of those words at once. But in our text where Jesus healed the leper and then the crowds came and it went viral. Jesus' meetings went viral. And the Bible says that Jesus stepped away. I love this. It says that he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. So he didn't even go to places that were lush and that were green and that were full of... He went to desolate places. But we don't like desolate places. We don't like it. We're going to pull out our phone and play a game. We're going to pull out, pull out our phone and download an app because, I, God, I feel dry. God, it's just hard. I, I don't feel like I've heard from you for like 30 seconds. <laughs> and God, you just haven't entertained me like I think that you should and you didn't give me what I wanted. And so I don't like this desolate place because it's just so hard. And like, you know, I know that I said I'm going to keep myself morally pure and I mean, I haven't swiped right for one day. <laughs> for one day, God. You're so lucky to have me. <laughs> and it is amazing to me. We have one day of dryness, mm. one day of a desolate place, and we don't know what to do. Wow. Some friend doesn't call us. We don't get invited to that party. Mm. We're not in the little click thing. Mm. And all of a sudden, we've got to fill that place with activity. We've got to fill that place with other people because we don't know what to do. And Jesus is saying, hey, I went away to desolate places to find my father. Do you think that maybe you could find God in that desolate place? Do you think that place of stillness, that place, do you think that maybe God has made sure that for a season your friends have pulled back? Do you think that maybe God has orchestrated this situation where you're alone and you feel like, man, why does it seem like nobody is with me? Why does it seem like this isn't working out? Do you think that maybe God's trying to say, I want some time with you? I want some time with you. I want to get to know you. I want to speak to you. I've got some things I want to say to you. But if you keep filling all of your desolate space time with activity and more and more activity, how are we going to move forward? And, you know, I was reading a book from a woman called Nancy Collier. And she said some fascinating things about this era of staying connected and 24-7. And, and the fact is that, you know, our connection with God is the only thing ultimately that's going to keep our hearts pure, that's going to keep us on mission with what God has called us to do. He is the one that gives us our strength and our joy and our sense of peace and our significance and our security. And I think so many of us are spiraling out of control and feeling anxiety and depression in unprecedented rates because we just stay plugged in to a virtual world 24-7. And this is what Nancy Collier said. I thought it was fascinating. She said, the more virtual friends and followers we acquire, the more connected and loved we feel. How scary is that? So it's not even like the friends we have in the real world. But if we get more followers and more friends, we feel, we actually have a dopamine rush. We feel like people love us. The more likes we get, for our opinions and our ideas, the more liked we feel and the more we like ourselves, which means if that was how it was working, that means if I posted and it got a lot of likes, oh, I feel good and I like myself. And if I posted something that God wanted me to post but nobody liked, I wouldn't like myself. That's a dangerous way to live. If I live like that, that would be so bad because then I wouldn't be doing the TV shows that I felt that the Lord was speaking to me about to speak about and I wouldn't speak prophetic truth. I would just tickle people's ears because that's what people like. So if you live for the approval of man, you will die by the criticism of man. And so you have to be very careful. She goes on to say, the more we communicate, the data shows, the less... Um, you know, the fact is that, sorry, the more entertainment we consume all the time, um, we 
feel less bored. Now, I'm talking about feeling. I'm not talking about what's actually really happening, but these short-term feelings. We keep trying to get more of this because I don't feel lonely if I'm being entertained. I don't feel lonely if I'm on there and I'm writing on the internet and I feel like people are... Even people I don't know, people I've never met, people that have no responsibility uh, for me or for our relationship, people that may never stick up for me, but I just feel really good in this moment because I feel like I'm connected. She says, the more information we amass, the more interesting we feel that we become. So if I just know more, I think that I'm more interesting. The easier we make our lives, we believe, the better that we will be. We believe that if other people know more about our lives, then our lives feel more real to us. That's a really scary thought. That my life can only feel real to me if you think, you know, people joke, but I don't think it's that um, untrue when people say, you know, if it's not on Instagram, did it really happen? Because a whole lot of people think I've got to post this. And I'm like, how about you live the moment rather than have to just post the moment? So we believe that if the world knows who we are, we will know who we are. And if you only see yourself through what others see about you, that's a really shallow way to live. And so at the end of the day, with enough virtual destinations to choose from, we're going to find ourselves somewhere we want to be other than where we are right now because we have access to that. And we think that we have to keep up with technology if we don't want to be left behind, if we want to actually be connected. But here is the reality. Every single one of us desperately needs to feel grounded, connected, and satisfied. Every single one of us. We were created by God for a relationship with God. It is Jesus that connects us to God. It's Jesus that connects us to the grace of God. We were created for community. God places the solitary in families. God sets every member of his body in place. We were never designed to live a virtual life. We were designed to live a real life in a real world with real people having real interactions. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. I hope you'll share your thoughts in the comments and if you feel led, please share this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks so much for watching.